Thus, the sound of all acoustic material, like the noise of modern traffic, the play of a Japanese shakuhachi fleet, or a Western symphony, could be, re 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 could be reproduced authentically for the first time. Microphone, loudspeaker, and amplifier create the body audible. Roughness is the body of the singing voice, says Roland Bach. The microphone gave the roughness of the voice back to an Occidental music characterized only by its discursive forms. It was a comeback of everything Occidental music, Occidental music had successfully abolished in its scores, instruments, and instrumentalized voices. The comeback of the non-musical sound of all things transitory, spontaneous, and physical. Digital recording bridged the auditory gap between the reality of musical performance and its simulation so perfectly that it created a musical hyperroom with the inherent potential of all possible acoustics, the one already realized as well the one to come. The postmodern composer or the rap musician takes his musical media produced material into account by using anything and everything style copies as well as direct quotations or digital samples of existing recordings of pop, jazz, folk, African, Eastern or Western music and other ready-made ready sounds coming his way for his musical collages. The first technician of music was the first to stop being a good musician, wrote Theodore Adorno in an essay entitled Musik und Technik, Music and Technique, commenting on the symphonist Hector Berlioz. Adorno accuses Berlioz, as well as his uh, successors, Franz Liszt and Richard Strauss, of having transformed the negation of meaning into a meaning by means of technification and technique of surprise in the Symphonie Fantastique. Berlioz applies this technique of surprise by extending the instrumentation of the orchestral sound, for example, Real church bells are used in the dais iron. And this example I would uh, like to show to you it comes from the other city, right? Take uh, to Korea. Um, for Adorno, a style of composing that manipulates its material, its musical material, only in a, um, in a technical sense, risks losing its musical content to the advantage of a technical virtuosity producing mere musical effects. Adorno labeled modernism as a painful, intrinsic movement of musical material by someone desperately composing in a time devoid of all meaning. Arnold Schoenberg's music comes to mind in this context. In his essay, <laughs> Philosophie der Neuen Musik, Philosophy of New Music, Adorno claimed, I quote, the inhumanity of art has to outperform that of the world as a sake of humanity, end of quotation. This is no longer true for the postmodern composer who loves playing games in a musical hyperroom. He keeps arranging his samples, his musical filing cards. Everything is ready and waiting. Compared with Adorno's gloomy ethnic aesthetic dictum, for example, postmodern composer John Sorum, where the logical reflections seem more like a fröhliche Wissenschaft, a gay science in the sense of Nietzsche, of music and media. I quote John Sorum, I grew up in New York City as a media freak, watching movies and TV and buying hundreds of records. There's also a lot of jazz in me, but there's also a lot of rock, a lot of classical, a lot of ethnic music, a lot of movie sound movements and disparate sound blocks. I sometimes find it convenient to store these events on filing cards so they can be sorted and ordered with minimum effort. End of quotation. I would like uh, to give you now a short example out of the uh, kind of sound collage um, um, of John Zorn. Um, it's called Speed Lane and um, was recorded on, uh, in, in the year 1987. Uh, also in the past, composers introduced the sounds of the world to us. They acted as mediators. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, for example, saw the little Turkish exoticism in his opera Die Entführung aus dem Serai and, it, and in his piano work Anatoka. Camille Sassons offered something of Egypt in his fifth piano concerto. Other composers like Isaac Albinis, Edward Grieg, and Bela Bartok found inspiration in the national icons of folk song and folk dance. 
the French fin de siècle composer Claude Debussy absorbed the sparkling sonorities of Indonesian gamelan. The result, multi-layered textures with ostinato patterns in the depths, sustained open fifths hanging under melodic arabesques and tonal ambiguity. Subject matter of Debussy's two books of piano preludes, composed during 1909 and 1913, ranges widely with their musing on many imaginative, exotical, and symbolical associations and their delineation, delineation of visions hitherto unrecorded in music. The prelude Wall, Veils, is a study in the use of whole tone scale or in augmented triads suggested by the whole tone scale and reflects Debussy's interest in Indonesian gamelan music. The prelude also expresses um, the indecisiveness indec uh, of Wales through Eastern whole tone harmonies. Let's hear this example, please, Colonel. It's one minute long. East is east and west is west, and never the train shall meet. This often quoted maxim encapsulated by the universally held belief that the east and the west are mutually exclusive, like night and day, or fire and water. However, the personality of composer Toru Takemitsu and his output shows that also ultim ultimate uh, integration is perhaps possible. In Takemitsu's music, European and Japanese characteristics coexist peacefully, and in fact, Takemitsu is the best known Japanese composer in Europe and one of the most frequently performed composers uh, in general. The major figures inspiring Takemitsu's early works, written in the 1950s, were Debussy and Messiaen. Interesting enough, both of them were French composers who were inspired by Oriental music and electronic music also. As you remember, the Aunt Martino and the work of, um, of uh, Messiaen. In the 1950s, Takemitsu also experimented with tape music and began his long career as a film composer. His collaboration with master director Akira Kurosawa gave rise to his most famous film scores. The 1960s was also an important period for Takemitsu in the sense that he finally began to rediscover his Japanese cultural roots. He used traditional Japanese instruments in some of his works, of which particularly November Steps from 1967 for Iwa, Shakuhachi and Orchestra became famous. Takemitsu worked towards a synthesis of the aesthetic and philosophical dimensions of Western and Eastern music. In the spirit of Debussy and Impressionism, he often sought inspiration outside music, for example, in literature, the visual arts, or natural phenomena. Takemitsu did not write program music, music with an explicit literal sujet like Harold in, Italy, Harold in Italy of Berlioz, or with specific references to visual details or events. The inspiration is combined more as a mood. Um, please give us uh, the next example. It's